What's up everybody, welcome back. This is the second video that I'm going to be making in a series about how to build a retail environment in Blender. In the last video I showed how to set up the fixture plan and the elevations that I created in AutoCAD and import them into Blender to serve as a wireframe to construct the store. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to build the architectural shell, which would be the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. This is a very simple layout, it's just a box, but we'll end up with something like this. So we're going to do a concrete floor, brick wall, white painted ceiling, and some structural beams and lighting. So the first thing that I want to do is organize my drawings. I'm going to select my plan, M to bring up the move to collection menu, select a new collection, call this plan. I'm going to grab my three wall elevations, M to bring up the move to collection menu, put these on a collection called elevations. And then I'm going to put the storefront elevation on a separate collection called storefront elevation. Now I can control whether I want to see these visibly, or if I toggle on the selectable icon, I can lock them so that I can't accidentally select them or delete them. I also like to rotate this plan so that when I look in the front view, front view is the positive Y axis looking in this direction. I want to set it up so when I look in this direction, I'm looking into the store. So I'm going to grab all of my drawings. Shift 3 brings up the transform pivot point. I'm going to select median point. R, Z rotates it in Z axis. G, Shift, Z to move it in the XY plane without moving vertically. And I'm going to place my entrance close to the origin point. That's the intersection point of the XY and, and Z axes. Now if I press 1 to go into front view, 5 to go into perspective view, I'm looking into the store. That's just a personal preference. You can set it up however you want. I'm going to set up a new camera just as my working camera. Shift right click to place the 3D cursor. Shift A, add a camera. 7 to go into top view. I'm going to take my camera and position it outside of the store. G, Y to slide it down. Zero to go into the camera view. Under data, you can change the amount of the focal length. Right now it's by default 50. I'm going to do a wider angle, do something like 20. N brings up the transform item menu. I want to place this approximately eye height inches. That's approximately five and a half feet or 66 inches. And then I'm going to try to center this drawing vertically by sliding the shift Y up a little bit. So now I have a camera that's looking into the store that I can use in the future. It's good practice to put these, to separate these into a new collection. I like to think of collections like layers. So M, new collection, I'm gonna call this camera, cameras. And again, I can lock this to make sure that I don't accidentally select it or move it. First thing I like to, to build is the ground plane. I'm gonna place my 3D cursor at the world origin. Shift S brings up this menu. One is cursor to world origin. Shift A, I'm going to add a new plane. Seven to go into top view. And I'm going to edit this plane, select the vertices, G, Y, pull them all the way to the front. G, Y, pull them all the way to the back wall. Use my snap with control to grab onto a vertex that aligns with the back edge. A to select all, S, X to scale in the X direction. Box select these vertices. GX, I'm going to slide to the outside of the wall. Same with this, GX, tab out. My origin of this object is the small orange dot. That's the point in which the scale and rotate transformations will occur. I want to reset to the center just as a good practice. You can right click and select set origin, origin to geometry, or I like to do it, set up a quick favorite, origin to geometry, which can be accessed by pressing Q. So this is my ground plane. Again, it's good practice to separate into collections or layers. So M, new collection, call this the ground. The next thing I want to do is model the walls. They're just an extrusion around these three sides. Technically, you could do something like this and grab the three edges, E to extrude, Z vertically, snap to the top of this wall, and now you have three faces that you can separate and call walls. Shift S2, I'm just going to put a large light inside here. SY, scale in the Y direction, crank this from 100 to like 200, 400. And so this can serve as your walls. In real life, walls are not super thin. They actually have a thickness. If you want to model it more realistically, so 7 to go into top view, shift right click to place the 3D cursor, shift A, add a new plane, shift Z to go into wireframe. I'm going to align the edges here in edit mode, vertex, GX. I'm going to grab the edge there, GY. This is where the wall ends. And I'm going to grab these vertexes, GY, and slide them all the way up to the top where the wall ends. GY, control, snap there. 
E to extrude, Y in the Y direction, Control to snap there. Grab these, E, X, snap to the opening in the door. So I'm in vertex mode right now. You can also do this in edge mode. E, X, snap to the other opening in the wall. E, X, to extrude to the other door. E, X, snap to that wall. E, X, snap there. E, X, snap there. And grab this edge, extrude it downward. E, Y, G, Y, snap. So now I have an object, but this 3D object can be extruded, E, control, and now I have a three-dimensional object that can represent the walls. M, new collection, call this walls. And then for the ceiling, I can just grab the ground plane, shift D, Z, and then snap to the top, tab into edit mode, A to select all, E to extrude to give it some thickness. I'm going to give it two feet of thickness. M to put in a new collection, I'm going to call this ceiling. Now my light's a little too high, G, Z, put it just underneath the ceiling, and now I can see zero to go into my camera view. It looks like I've pulled this slightly too high. I'm going to grab these two, one to go into front view, G, Z, snap to the top of the wall. I've set up the shortcut Alt-Q to be my focus toggle. I think it's called focus. Edit preferences, key map. I'm going to search for my key binding, Alt-Q, local view. Just kidding. If you're not familiar with local view, it's very useful. So I have a lot of objects in this scene right now. I have the line drawings, I have the ceiling, I have the walls, I have the floor. If I just wanted to select one or two objects, if you do local view, Alt Q in my case, it'll isolate the objects that you've selected and hide everything else. And then you can go back, Alt Q, to turn it off. I like to think of it like an isolation mode. For some very simple texturing, I'm going to open up my asset browser. I've created a series of materials that I commonly use. One is a concrete floor, so I'm going to isolate my object, select my concrete floor material, and just drag and drop. What that's done is add a material that's called concrete floor that has these textures already mapped onto it. So you can see there's some roughness, you can see that there's some bump. I'm going to select this wall, isolate it, open up my asset browser, drag my red brick material. It needs to be unwrapped. So the scale is uniform, tab in edit mode, it is select all, U to unwrap, cube projection. This is way too large. Under the UV editor, I'm just gonna grab everything, A to select all, S to scale. I'm just eyeballing this right now, but if you want to do this accurately, you can model a brick. A brick is typically two and a quarter inches tall and seven and five eighths inches wide. It looks like my map is a little bit too large. Just scale it down a little bit. So that's approximately the right size. If you look at the plan, there's a column right here. So shift right click, shift A, add a cube, align it, G, X, G, Y. Make sure it's aligned on the ground. Pull this up till it reaches the ceiling. Put this in a new collection. I'm going to call it columns. And then I'm going to steal the brick material from this wall. I'm going to shift left click on the wall so it is my active object. Control L brings up the link transfer data menu, and I'm going to select link materials. So now this material is red brick, but it needs to be unwrapped. You'd unwrap, cube projection, get approximately the right size brick. This doesn't have to be perfect. And now I have a column. The next thing I'm going to do is model these beams that you can see in the ceiling. Control space over my 3D window to maximize it temporarily. Shift right click to place the 3D cursor. Shift A to add a mesh, RX90 to rotate it, GZ to snap, in edit mode. I'm going to simplify this and just make it an I-beam, GX and snap. Tab into edit mode, Control R to drop it an edge loop, Control R to add edge loop here, Control B to bevel. And I'm going to select the center, Control B bevel. I'm going to select these faces, invert my selection, and delete those faces. So now I have a plane that can be extruded. In plan view, GY, I'm going to pull this all the way down to the front of the store. One to go in the front view. And you can duplicate with Shift D in the X direction, like that. Right, these are duplicates, so it's not linked. If you link object data, then they're going to be instances. They're essentially identical objects. Alt D, X direction, Shift R to repeat one, two, three more times. Now I have beams that run across like this, and they're all connected. If I look at the side elevation, you can see that there's another I-beam right there. These are actually trusses, but I, I simplified them just to be beams. I'm going to grab one of these, Shift D to duplicate, RZ 90 degrees to rotate it, and then place it to a line here, and then GX 
and align it with the walls. So now in my camera view, columns and beams, the next thing I'm going to do is create openings for these doors. I'm going to grab my elevation as reference. There's a couple different ways to create openings and walls for windows and doors. The first is just using the geometry. Control R, I'm going to place a horizontal edge loop and snap it vertically to the opening of the door. I'm going to select these two faces, one on the inside and one on the outside of the wall. Right click bridge faces and it's going to pop an opening right there. And you can delete this XF. Everything is still quad geometry so you can still do edge loops. That's one way of doing it. So another way is using booleans. You would model the void. Shift A, mesh, cube. Align this with the opening in your door. GX, GZ, I'm just snapping to the spaces in GZ. I'm going to go past the ground plane. And if you have the bool tool add-on enabled, you can select your cutting object, select your wall, control minus. It's going to add a Boolean modifier to this, but I don't like using Booleans too often because they can be a little bit buggy. The solver is selected as fast. If you choose exact, it'll show as a successful Boolean operation. But this is non-destructive, so if I move this object, you can see the opening in the wall also moves. So that's another way of doing it. But in this case, I'm just going to use a similar technique as that. Shift Z to go into wireframe. Box select these two faces. Right click, bridge faces to create that opening. Select this bottom face. X, F to delete. So now I'm just going to model the doors. Shift A, cube, one to go into front view. Tab into edit mode, align with the door. GX. GZ, GZ. Right now it's two feet thick. I just want it to be a two inch door, seven. And then I'm going to place this inside the opening. Shift D, X, then control to snap to the other door location. This is a wider door, so I'm just going to edit it, tab into edit mode, grab this edge, GX, control to snap there. I'm going to select both of my doors. See the orange dot? That's the origin. I'm going to reset it, origin to geometry. I'm going to model this two inch door frame that goes around. So shift S2, one to go into front view, add a new cube. GZ, align with the top of the door frame. GX, align with the side. Tab into edit mode. GX to align with the other side. GZ to align with the bottom. The scale is uniform. So if I take these and inset an amount of two inches, right click B, e, bridge faces, delete all these bottom faces, XF. Select all these, S, Z, 0, flatten them off, G, Z to align with the ground plane. And then I'm going to make this slightly wider than the, the wall. Shift Z to toggle back into solid mode. So there's my door frame. I'm going to make a duplicate of this, Shift D, X, 1 to go into front view. Shift Z to go to wireframe. And I'm going to align the frame with this narrower door. G to grab, B to identify a base point on this edge, X snap to there. Since this interface of this jam, this one right here, since it aligns exactly with the interface of this one, so this face, you can see that there's a weird graphic glitch going on called Z fighting. Um, that's because there's two faces overlapping in the same point in 3D space, and the computer doesn't know which one to show. So to avoid that, I'm just going to scale this in the X direction a very small amount, and then they won't overlap anymore. A to select all, all Q to exit isolation mode. Next thing I'm going to model are these track lights. 7 to go into top view, Shift Z to go into wireframe, Shift right click to place a 3D cursor, Shift A, add a cube. I'm just going to make this a 1 inch by 1 inch square. So in the X value and then in the Z value, I'm going to make that 1 inch. And I'm going to make this 8 feet long or 96 inches. So this is going to be one track. For each 8 foot section of the track, I'm going to model two attachment points to the ceiling and then a series of track heads. And this will be my track light. Seven to go into top view, tab to go into edit mode, shift A, add a cylinder, S to scale down, make it very small. One to go into front view, S, Z to extend it vertically. This is the attachment to the ceiling, G, Z, G, Z to snap to the top there. I'm gonna move this towards the end of the, the end of the track down here, shift D, and I'm gonna move it down to the end of the track. Right. I'm gonna pull these a little bit taller and then they can just clip through the ceiling like that. The next thing I'm going to add is a track head. That's essentially just a cylinder with a light in the center. Tab into edit mode. I'm going to add the cylinder in here. 
S to scale it down, one to go into front view, GZ to bring it down below the rectangular track. I'm going to scale it up a little bit larger, a little bit longer, and then rotate it. Tab out of edit mode, see that my scale is non-uniform. Control A, S to apply scale, that changes everything to one. Tab into edit mode, in face select mode, I'm going to grab the end of the light. I to inset, E to extrude. I'm going to grab one face of my track light, select linked all to select the rest of it, one to go into front view, shift Z to go into wireframe, G to reposition, and I'm going to connect it with a vertical structure right there. Shift S2 to place the cursor there, add my selection, shift A, cylinder, S to scale down, very small, one SZ to scale vertically, so that's going to be my track head. Tab into edit mode, grab my light head, G, Y to move it down to the beginning, R to rotate it, shift D, rotate it again to the other side, and then I'm going to shift D to duplicate, shift R to repeat three times. I'm going to delete this one. That's my track head. Set to go into top view. In my sample, it looks like I did four rows of lights. So I'm going to position this over here as Alt D, X to create a duplicate, do two more times. And then I'm going to grab these four, Alt D, Y to duplicate in the Y direction. I'm going to do that a few more times. That's one too many. Control Z to undo. And now I have lights. Well, it looks like I'm overlapping the column. So in front view, I'm going to grab each of those. GX, shift it over there. Actually, I'm going to move it to the right of this column. Just repositioning the spacing here. Zero to go into my camera view. Go to rendered. The one light in my room is overlapping these things. So I'm going to position it below those. And I'm actually going to redo the lights. I'm going to delete this light. Now there's nothing lighting my scene. 7 to go into plan view. Shift C to go into wireframe. Shift right click to place the 3D cursor. Shift A to add a light. I'm going to pick an area light. Control space to go back to my default layout. Under data, I'm going to change the shape from square to a disk. I'm going to untick multiple importance. 1 to go into front view. GZ to place it underneath the track bed so that they don't overlap them. And I'm going to rotate it towards this wall. So go back into camera view, go back into rendered. You can see it's there, but it's very weak. Control space. Now I'm going to increase the strength to 75. Back in plan view, I'm going to start closer to the front of the store. And then Alt V, -E, create a duplicate. Shift R to repeat. And I'm going to do that all the way to the back. So zero. Now you can see these are illuminating that wall. But it looks like it's actually a little bit too bright. I'm going to go 50 instead. And this one looks like it's casting quite a shadow there. So I'm going to, I'm just going to delete it. Grab all my lights in rendered view, Alt D, X, and I'm going to position it over here. But I want it to wash onto this wall, so Control M, X to mirror that. I can keep it approximately where the track heads are, but they don't have to. And then I'm going to duplicate another row here and duplicate another row here. Select one of my lights, Shift G brings up the Select Grouped menu, and you can select Type to select all the light objects. M to bring up the move to collection menu. I'm going to put these into one called lights. Zero to go back into camera view. Alt shift Z to turn off the overlays just to check to see what my rendering is looking like. Looks like the back wall could use some light. Seven to go into top view. Shift Z to go into wireframe. Alt D to create a duplicate. Right click to reset position. R to rotate 90 degrees. G Y to move it a little bit closer. And then Alt D to create a duplicate a total of four times. One, two, three, four. And so this looks good to me as a starting point. I'm going to hide my storefront elevation. And the last thing I'm going to do is apply materials to my track lights. Select material, add new. I'm just going to call this white. And I'm going to make another material, just call it LED. In the shader editor, I want the LED material. I'm going to delete my principled BSDF, add an emission shader, and connect it to the material output. I'm going to tab into edit mode, select all these faces that are going to be illuminated. You can select them one by one like this, or you can select one and hit shift G and select similar area. Reduce the threshold, and then it selects only the faces with the same area. Select LED, assign. I'm going to make it glow a little brighter. So now you can see the track heads when you look in the render. In the next video, I'll be demonstrating how to model the wall panel system and importing the floor fixtures. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe for more.